What's going on my people? So we are back. Uh, we have another issue with the MK5. I was driving down the road all of a sudden I seen this message on my dashboard which says something about stop engine, stop, shut engine now. Uh, something about the, uh, the cooling being low. So I came out, you know, and refueled it and crank it back home and just been monitoring. So here is the deal guys. Uh, I found that there is a minor leak as you can see right there. I don't want this up right here once and twice. But if you pay attention over here, you see what is running. So guys, you know, it's only little things like this that fix itself. You don't have to take it over to the shop. I was thinking that they probably the coolant was able to uh, bust it or crack somewhere. But it just happened that uh, to see this little leak over here. So what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to shut my, my engine off. I'm going to release this and check to see if it is only the clamp that is not tight enough something busting in here but but i'll be right back guys you have to be real careful guys before you open this up because you know once the car heats up it's gonna be under pressure so just be careful when you open it up try not to uh, put your face up you know above it because the vapors might burn you up you can see right now uh i already you know released the cap to release some of that pressure so i'm gonna proceed and uh you know release that to see what's going on there it's okay guys we are back at it. Uh, I went over to my local junkyard and I was able to find one out of an older car. You know, uh, I think it was a 2006. This part is all the same. It doesn't matter if you had the 2.0 turbo charge or you had the 2.5 uh, regular Jetta, Passat, uh, probably newer models as well. But like I say, I already went, and went, went ahead and washed it off, you know, cleaned it up pretty good. There is some black spots on the inside that I couldn't get to it, or matter, you know, I tried and tried, but I couldn't get to it. But anyway, I shouldn't hurt anything. So the removal of this uh, part right here is pretty simple. You're gonna need some pliers, and you're gonna need uh, a T Torx 25. So, uh, first thing you have to do is uh, remove this sensor from here um, you have to grind there to see the tap and just pull back on it this, you want to remove this right here push pull up on them and over here on the back you see that right there you got one and you got two so you had two heat old 25 and you had to remove this clamp hose and that clamp hose right there. Let me show you. Uh, this piece right here, you can see right there. So it's one house clamp, two house clamps, and one and two. So guys, I'm gonna go ahead and start doing this and we'll be right back. Guys, uh, before you move those hoses, uh, I will recommend you to see for now, whatever you have in there, if it is antifreeze, you might want to save it so you can reuse it. I've been adding up water ever since this morning. This I noticed this part breaking or failing up this morning. So uh, obviously there is a part that I don't want to hesitate or wait too long to change it because I don't want to mess up my engine. So I'm like I said, I'm gonna be siphoning it out. So I got one of these little manual pumps. Like I say, um, I'm just gonna be throwing siphon everything away because it's just most of it is just water. So uh, as you can see, uh, it's hard to do with one hand, guys. But uh, if you got somebody to help you out, well, that's good. If not, you know, just I say I'm having a hard time because I'm trying to record a video and do this at the same time. But I'm going ahead and shift on this out, guys, and be right back. So once you have removed the uh, the liquids, the antifreeze from the inside, just go ahead and remove those pitors 25. So okay guys, the old one has been removed. Like I said, it's just two hoses, two screws, and that's it. Uh, as you can see, this is my old one. It's not the cleanest either. It has a lot of uh, build up on the bottom. And like I said earlier on my video, this is the part that fell in it. This little nipple right here, you can see. I'm sorry guys, it's kind, kind of hard to focus. But that little nipple right there, you see oh there you go 
that's where my water was leaking from once the car was you know has heat up over to the normal operating temperature uh, this <clears throat> antifreeze builds up pressure and that's where it was coming out from but anyway like I say I was able to find me a replacement part for $12 that was including taxes and everything I'm pretty sure you can find them on eBay for about $20, $25 brand new and about $20 from China if you feel like you can wait all that you know a long time go ahead if not I say good choice is your uh, local junk yard um, as far as having to purge the system from any air bubbles guys I don't know I'm gonna find out as soon as I replace the unit and refill it with some of that uh, recommended iron freeze or coolant for Volkswagen so guys so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put my new part back in there fill it up crank my car up and wait to see what's gonna happen it's okay guys so I got the new part back in there uh, I went ahead and filled it back up. As you can see, I put you know a little bit more than normal. It shouldn't hurt anything. I just put that just in case uh, you know I might have lost some fluid on the process of intercharging the part. So uh, next thing to do is like I say, I went ahead and cracked my car up to let it you know reach normal normal operation temperatures and start you know letting the fluids to build pressure to see if I'm going to have any leaks or not. I went ahead and uh, wiped everything off to make sure that there is no leak. If there is any leak, I should be able to see, you know, dripping down just like I did with the other part. Like I said the other part was affected over here. So, transfer my crack over here on the seam or uh, somewhere else. But I say, guys, if you have an issue like this where you notice that you're losing a lot of cooling, uh, you have to start checking for leaks, you know. And you have to start checking for visual leaks. In this case, mine was pretty easy to find. Was over here on the reservoir. Uh, sometimes it might be on the radiator. Uh, just gonna have to try to find it. But like I say, this time my problem was right there. So guys, if you have in this issue, you can you already know that it's not hard to replace. You don't have to take your car to the dealership because they're gonna charge you an eye out of your face. I said this part was about $12 in my young yard, about 10 minutes of labor at the most, and that's it guys, but like I said guys, thank you for watching.